Today's lesson is about how to create a contract. Contract in Autodesk is basically the name of your billing arrangement that you have with your client. Of course, it can have an underlying actual contract, a written document in which you outline the duties, the performance, your SLA and your, your billing line items. But in Autodesk, it basically is your setup of the billing. How can you create a contract? There's a couple of ways. Uh, there's uh, always to the top side, the basically the plus sign where you can have a uh, setup where you can go to the contracts. And you can set up already uh, per your default settings what kind of contract it will be. There's also, of course, once you're in the contract section and let's say you have done a uh, search over there, there's also the button that says new and it has that same uh, setup where you have your, your buttons on how to create a new contract. Now, I'm going to kind of show from the example and recurring service contract. You can also do a time and materials contract, fixed price contract, block hour contract, retainer contract and per ticket contract. So there's a lot of options available. Recurring service contract, I'm going to show you kind of a quick example there. So I can also go uh, into those other ones a little bit more into detail. And this would be a new name, a new contract, contract. And then usually what I, we uh, suggest is basically a contract and then you say put a company name in there. Always an easy way to find it. And then here you select the company for which it is. Just press the first one there. It can be your default service desk contract. Let's say if you have a uh, pricing set for anything that's outside of your contract, then you can make it a default service desk contract in this case uh, for recurring services. Usually that's not the one, but if this client has a particular disk contract and everything is covered, maybe it's your, your all you can eat buffet contract, then you can say, okay, it's going to be my default. Contact name, you can select one, it's not applicable. And the contract period type can be monthly, it can also be quarterly, semi, annual, or yearly. I think the majority of us will all use the monthly one. Start date, if you start it in the middle of the month, then the next billing cycle will also at the beginning of that particular day. If you want to have a setup that you want to build per month, then we suggest to basically start always per the first of the month and then you have nice monthly billing cycles. If you add a service in the middle of the month, then it will be prorated. So let's say we put a start date of uh, beginning of June in this case, and we add the services per today. It would, would add the services, it would start billing as of today. End date, there's a, a possibility to have a fixed end date. Maybe it's only one year. But you have also the option to say, you know what, it can only, uh, it will stop after, for example, 25 occurrences. There's a contract description that you can put in here. This is something for your internal side. The contract category depends on what kind of contracts uh, you have all set up. And as you can see, this particular demo has a whole bunch of categories that has already been set up. Usually this one, for example, IT managed service gold, that's usually the all you can eat buffet. So let's just select that one. Line of business. Again, you can create several line of businesses and billing. It's in the different lessons being explained. Right now, I just choose general services. There's an option to put in your external contract number. There's an option to put in your purchase order number uh, from the client. Another option too here is that you maybe select a quote number that references it to. Service level agreement. Again, we have this different uh, SLAs already uh, set up in this one. I would suggest in this case, uh, the premium SLA would be applicable for, your, for the gold plan, but you can have different setups again. For that, refer to your setup and how you have uh, your, your billing with your clients arranged. Setup fee, is there a setup fee on the quote or is it basically uh, without a setup fee? If you enter a setup fee, let's say $25, then you also get the option of setup fee billing code and you can choose the code to which this one needs to be applied. That's in this case will be managed services. Press next. In here, you have already the ability to, uh, to add your services. Now, what I said in the beginning is that if you would add your services right now over here, they would start right away as the beginning of the month because your contract starts at the beginning of the month. I want to show you the same setup in a bit, and then I'll show you how to add services that are basically prorated. So right now, I'll just start with a monthly price of $0. Approve and post. It's manual on timesheet approval or immediate. I would always say manual, especially for the new contract. Uh, always put it to manually and always check this box time reporting requires start and stop times so you do want to have that in there so you can track the time and approve post the labor is manually once this contract is uh, up and running and this client runs perfectly fine you can change this also uh, later on you can edit it and uh, make some changes there's a way that you want to like to notify people uh, usually contracts are being done in a, in a separate department that not really uh, other people have to be notified but in this case, you have the option to notify other people, even with a check mark, the territory team. And now we press finish. In this case, the contract is being created. And we get right away an option to uh, open the contract that we just created. 
a good thing over here. Uh, you will get all the all the specific options again, and you can easily change an edit section to make some modifications. That would be under options and then edit contract. That's where you can change this option that we just did. And as you can see here, there's a whole bunch of items that we can do. I'm going to go right now to the services. And here right now, I'll say, okay, has on the 28th, this is the where we want to buy a new service. But let's say I want to do it prorated, and it was on the 24th of this month. You press the search bar. Now, in this case, we're going to say new service. And we're just going to apply one from the defaults that we have in the system. And that particular service will then be added as of the 24th. Pull up the menu where we can add the services. As you can see over here, for now, I'm just going to use the IT monitoring. And whatever you set up in the service is now already being pre-filled over here. Uh, make sure that the effective date is on the 24th. And I'll press save and close. And as you already see on the bottom, it's prorated. So this one is being prorated. And as of the first of the month, because I said the first of the month is the billing cycle, that's when it will add in the other one. Once this page close, uh, this, this button closes, we'll have the service listed over here. As you can see over here, the service has now been added. In exclusions, it's going to be a separate lesson, uh, something that we can do to exclude some uh, some items. Uh, I'll not go into detail over there. It's exclusions, like I said, is in a different lesson and it will be explained more. Configuration items, this is where you can add a configuration item and apply it to this particular contract. Now, also in the configuration item lesson, we have explained a little bit more. Once there's a configuration item here, you can right click on it and then uh, add it to this particular contract. Another way to create a contract is also if we're going to look for a particular contract. Let's see, there's a couple of contracts already in here. As you see there's a whole bunch of contracts already in here. It says, uh, let's say we're going to choose this one, the time and materials. It's to basically click on this little hamburger menu and we say the copy contract wizard. This one will bring up us a new wizard. And this is a different type of contract. This is a time and materials. And by doing a copy contract wizard, I'll show you how it works. In this case, I will leave in there a copy of that uh, auditors by default shows it. It's always a good way to, uh, to have it. And this is time material, so we make it a default service contract. It will ask us for a start date and an end date. Let's just call it this one it's just for one month. Here's the uh, contract description, time and materials, uh, contract category, the, the default level has been set up. The SLA will choose, we'll not choose anything, and we'll press next. And there's a uh, notification coming up. One or more default contracts uh, with an overlapping time frame already exists. Would you like a new default selection? You press OK. So there's always a check some balances inside, which is a great thing. Estimated revenue, you can leave that one uh, blank. Approve both labor manually. Again, this is the checkbox that we're going to on. And then we press Next. And here you can see what kind of contract this one is set up. So here we have a whole bunch of role names that are uh, from the system with a regular role hourly billing rate. But this particular contract uh, has a different rate. As you can see, it's usually 225, but now it's 175. And in here, you can make different changes. So let's say we had uh, this contract for a month. Maybe it could be a promo. And this month, for example, their price is not 100, but it would be 90. This is how you can change a contract and you can change uh, pricing for a particular client where you have maybe a discounted rate. Or it could be also the other way around. You have a client with a premium rate and you set up the 125, you put the 150 rate in there. Once you press next, and after you have verified all those items, again, it's the notification tab, and then we can press on finish. And now the contract is being created. So that's an easier way of getting to a contract, especially if you have a whole bunch of line items with different kind of pricing. And this is a great way of copying a contract. If you have a lot of services, it might be a little bit more difficult because then you have all those configuration items and it might be a different way of, of doing it. But creating it like this way is a, is a great way of getting a new contract. Now, the same way what you can do too is to create a uh, one that says per ticket or also using the fixed price or the block hours. You can use the copies. There's already examples in Autotask. Usually you can start with those ones. Uh, creating those contracts from scratch is usually a little bit more, uh, more difficult. So I would always suggest uh, to use a copy. And once you get your feed with and work with a whole bunch of those contracts on how to set them up, I would always suggest to use the copy and modify them from there. But like I said, if you have a new contract and you know how to work your way, then most likely you can also create a new contract completely from scratch. That's that's a cleaner way, to, of course, to do it. Once you have a nice clean way, uh, you have also some charges on there and use all the items there. You can use some user-defined fields in there as well to modify more. Then, of course, you have that one that you can use and then you can copy them there. I think this is a good overview of how to create new contracts and what kind of options you have in there. Again, if you have any more questions, then visit our Facebook group and post a comment over there. Thank you.